Hello everyone. Welcome to Come Sit at My Table. We're Tom and Melissa, and we really appreciate that you're here for our video today. In our very last video, we made a warm caramel apple cake with caramel sauce. And I mentioned in that video that I had come up with the idea for that cake and I had developed that recipe after Melissa and I had been on several cruises where we had eaten warm chocolate melting cake in the main dining room of the cruise ship. Because I made that statement, several of our subscribers commented that they would like to have the recipe for the warm chocolate melting cake. Now, we had no intentions of doing two cake recipes back to back, but because people asked me to post that recipe, we are going to do the warm chocolate melting cake today. Let's talk about what you're going to need if you want to make the warm chocolate melting cake. We're gonna start with one cup of self-rising flour. Now, it does need to be self-rising. If you can't get self-rising flour, and we did have several subscribers who commented that self-rising flour is just not available where they live, you can make your own. All you have to do is take a one cup measure Add one and a half teaspoons of baking powder and one half teaspoon of salt to your one cup measure and then finish filling it up with all purpose flour. That will make self rising flour for you. So if you can't get self rising flour, just make your own out of baking powder, salt, and all purpose. You're also going to need three fourths cup of sugar. Now, this is just white granulated sugar. So you're gonna need three-fourths cup of that. You're also going to need two tablespoons of cocoa. This is unsweetened cocoa powder. And you're going to need one half cup, no, I'm sorry, three-fourths of a cup of milk. Whole milk is best, but whatever kind of milk you can use. Okay, oh, and you're also going to need three tablespoons of oil. Now I'm using canola oil but you use whatever you feel is best for you. That's our cake batter. We will mix all that together and put it in an eight inch square baking dish. That's the first layer and this is kind of a layer cake. When you make a layer and put it in, you don't mix it in with the other layers. So that cake batter will be our first layer. If you want to make a bigger portion, you can easily double this recipe and fix it in a nine by 13 pan. But this will do an eight by eight and it will easily give you four servings if not more. All right, after we make the cake batter and put it in the bottom, then we will mix one cup of brown sugar and one fourth cup of cocoa powder again. So we're using cocoa powder twice in this recipe one cup of brown sugar and one fourth cup of cocoa. That's our second layer and we will put it right on top of the cake batter, but not stir it in. Then our top layer is going to be one and three fourths cup of hot water and you can see that it is steaming. I've just taken it out of the microwave and it was boiling. It does not have to be boiling when you pour it on, but it does need to be steaming hot. When you pour that water on top, again, you're not going to stir it in. You just pour it on top and then we're ready to bake it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start by preheating our oven to 350 degrees. Once our oven's ready, then we'll make our cake batter. So let's do that. We'll put in our self-rising flour, our sugar, and our cocoa. And I do like to kind of whisk all that together. I don't know if I can get all this cocoa out of here. I sure don't want to leave that in there. Okay, I do like to whisk that together before I add the liquid, just because I think it helps it kind of dissolve and mix together better. So we've whisked that together. We'll add our milk and our oil. And now that that's in, we can whisk up our batter. This is going on the bottom. Now, if you watched our warm caramel apple cake 
recipe video, you know that this is kind of a magic cake, really. What you put on the bottom, this cake layer, ends up on top. And what you put on top, the brown sugar, the cocoa, and the hot water, ends up on the bottom. And that will form a fudgy layer in the bottom of our pan. All right. I did. I just sprayed it with nonstick spray. Um, you are going to want to do that because there is going to be a fudgy layer in the bottom of your pan and you don't want that sticking. So, we'll just put our cake layer right in the bottom. And it will kind of spread out all on its own. You might have to help it just a little bit into the corners, but it should just spread out. It's not that thick. It's not a thin batter, but it's not a real thick batter either. Let's get all that out of there. Okay. So we have that in. Now we're going to mix together our brown sugar and our cocoa. I'll just, I like to do this with a fork. I feel like it's just easier to kind of break it up and get in there with a fork than a spoon. So I just want to get that mixed up really well. We don't want to see any big lumps of brown sugar or big lumps of cocoa. If you wanted to sift the cocoa before you did this, you certainly could, but I just don't feel like it's necessary because we're mixing it together anyway. So you do it the way you want to. If you want to sift that cocoa and make sure the lumps are out of it, that would be perfectly fine. But I just think that's another step we don't really need to do since we're using this fork to kind of blend it. Now, you should be able to see here, you can't really see where the brown sugar ends and the cocoa begins. It has kind of all combined and that's what you want. You don't want lumps of brown sugar still visible or pieces of big lumps of cocoa still visible. All right, and now that just goes right on top of our cake batter. And I'm just going to try to spread that out as I sprinkle it on. And we can take our fork and kind of spread that out some because we want it in a pretty even layer. Now, there's a piece of brown sugar that I didn't get mixed up real well, but that'll be okay. And it's not gonna hurt anything. And then, and we're not mixing this in now. We're just making a layer right on top of our cake batter. And now we're just going to take our hot water and pour right on top. And I'm gonna do that in a spoon. I feel like it kind of does better if you do it in a spoon. It just doesn't make such a mess out of your brown sugar and cinnamon. And you can see that it's kind of mixing in with that brown sugar and cinnamon but we're just making a layer right on top. We're not going to stir that in at all. That water is just laying right on top. Now, that's it. We've made our cake layer, we made our brown sugar and cocoa layer, and our water layer. Magically, that water and brown sugar and cocoa are going to sink to the bottom and make a beautiful chocolate sauce. And that cake layer is going to rise to the top and make a really nice cake. Now we're going into the oven for about 40 minutes. We'll check it at 40 minutes. It may need another five, but you do not want to overbake this. If you overbake it, that fudge sauce on the bottom could burn and it will get too dry and not be spoonable. You want to be able to scoop out a piece of that cake and then get some of that fudge sauce off, off the bottom that you can drizzle on top. All right, let's get this in the oven. And when it's finished in about 40, 45 minutes, we'll be back and let you see what it looks like. Our warm chocolate melting cake is finished baking and we are ready to take it out. 
Man, it smells delicious. Yum. This is one I am happy to dig into. Now, as you'll notice, we have the cake on top. I hope you can see, I'm gonna try to pick this up. Hope you can see that there's a chocolate sauce layer on the bottom. Hope that shows up. So we're gonna see it right now. So we'll just take a piece of the cake off the top. Put it right there. And look at that wonderful chocolate sauce in the bottom. My oh my. That is so good. Now, if you're going to have warm chocolate melting cake, or in this case, hot chocolate melting cake, you have to have a little ice cream. You have to. So let's just take a little scoop of ice cream and put it right there on the side. Okay, maybe another little one. Maybe we need two. Doesn't that look good? Mm. Enough to eat. And it's so easy. You just make three layers and let it bake. And I know this is going to be hot as it can be. But I'm still going to try it. Babe, you want to bite? I think I'm going to wait just a little bit. Mm. I think that might be a little messy to eat by myself. It's a little messy for somebody to feed to right, you. Right. And it's hot. But I can't wait to have a bite. It's not very good. You shouldn't eat any. <laughs> Man, that is delicious. I don't remember when or where I got this recipe. I've had it for years and years. We made it so many times when our kids were home. They loved this cake. And I, whoever came up with this idea, I sure do appreciate them doing it because it gave me the idea for the warm caramel apple cake. By the way, Melissa will put the link for that warm caramel apple cake in the description box below. I might have to, no, I better not take another bite. <laughs> I can't wait to finish that. Right under this video, you will see a description box. It'll have the title of this recipe. If you'll click where that title is, where it says warm chocolate melting cake, that box will expand. You'll find the written recipe for this dessert. But Melissa will also put a link to the warm caramel apple cake so that you can find it too if you wanna do it. And right under the recipe, you'll find our contact information. If you would, we sure would appreciate you going right below this video and clicking the thumbs up. That just says you liked our video. If you've not already, click the subscribe button under the video on this side. That just helps you join our channel. It doesn't cost a penny. You can just join our channel so that you'll know when we put up videos. Right beside that subscribe button is a little notification bell you can click and the word all and YouTube will notify you when we put new videos up. Thank you so much. We appreciate you watching. We especially appreciate those of you who have clicked that subscribe button. That just helps us build our channel, and we really do appreciate those of you that have joined us. We always appreciate when you come sit at our table. And we appreciate your comments. We've received so many really nice comments, and we appreciate that. All right, remember, you are always welcome to come sit at my table. Have a great day, and eat some chocolate cake.